I obtained this at Federal Highways Works Administration files for the project. It's a March 22nd, 2011, that's about 30 days before the final EA published. The draft EA was published in July 2009. It's a cover letter to Domingo Galici now, who's in charge of this Bridges project over at FHWA. And it's from uh, the HDOT, basically in Tao, asking, we request your concurrence for the executed supplemental contract Number two, for this project, existing conditions upstream of the bridges have changed mm -hmm. due to rainfall and flooding, therefore requiring the consultant to provide additional hydraulic analysis and to modify the bridge design to accommodate the changed flows. Um, and in, in this contract, it's executed effective February 2011, but if the monies were effective, I guess, end of March. And then by end of April, they filed with the environmental office for the final EA of the one that was published two years earlier. After the hearing. After, the, yeah, there, there was, anyway. And there's $600,000 of design and redesign and re-studying everything about these bridges, uh, some of it to bridge 3A and less than half to bridge 3, um, for RM Towel to do all this. And it's all approved. and. The scope of services for this change order is, in part, contractors shall provide additional engineering, planning, surveying, and real estate services necessary for the redesign of the replacement bridges, allowing 420 calendar days and 630 calendar days for a total of 1,050 calendar days, semi-final construction documents due in 390 days, final in 180 days. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway. But part four, especially, uh, section E, extra services to complete the environmental assessment study, permitting and environmental clearances included, and et cetera, et cetera, bringing the total for the entire project since about 2002, I, I guess, the initiation roughly, um, to $1,657,000 for our, I guess, for our entire, partially from the state, partially from the feds. And so 600000 was added just in the last couple months for all that redesign and study for EA. But there was no updated or revised draft EA ever given an opportunity for public comment. I will defer that to the state, but I want to emphasize that has no effect on the bypass road in the Shoreline Subtac area. So I thank you for bringing it up for the record, but it's not relevant. Is your conclusion that has no effect? It has no effect on the bypass road, hmm. not for this application. So, are, uh, are there still outstanding questions that you want to discuss? So, Grace? this uh, temporary road that you're going to put in, that's already been considered. It's not in the area. Yes, sir. No. Proposal. That's, that's a proposal. proposal. Okay. That's Would you put it into consideration to moving it, Malka? Which is much safer. Echo the mic. No, um, you know, we'll discuss it. We'll send a written response to Councilmember Bird. I'm sorry. You're going to send a response to Councilmember Bird regarding. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, should we direct the response to you? you just CCS. Okay. Well, because you know, get a fax number because we want to document that for Okay. okay. Okay, yeah, and now was, back to Miss Grace's question yeah. about whether it would be better or not to build a road Malka, I mean build a temporary bypass road Malka of the highway as opposed to Mackay. Please, can one of you answer? Sure. We, we actually did look seriously at, at a number of different alternatives. One of them was to build a road on the Malka side. Um, we would have preferred doing that. But the problem that we have is uh, right where it cro there, there's two, two big problems. The, the first one is that where it crosses... Hey, Brian, do you mind going up there so the other people can see? Because we can't see. Oh, you sure. Sure. Right. sure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I can't actually use this one. This, this, this is fine because the, the things remain the same. 
This is bridge number 3A. So if we were to place a bridge on the Maka side, one of the things that happens is everyone talks about the Moai here. We're very interested in protecting that as a designated uh, wetland area. The interesting thing about this bypass is where, where it is right now on the Makai side, it can free span across the Muller Y. But if it goes on this side, and, and Mike can explain this part of the engineering, but if it goes on this side, what has to happen is we have to put foundations directly, foundations and fill directly into the wetland side. That is a greater impact than putting it on the Makai side. The, the other major factor that we have to look at is that um, because it would follow an arc like this, there are two properties here and also here. Um, and as it crosses, there would be an impact on two properties, possibly much more adverse on this one because now uh, part of the structure would be involved versus placing it on this side affecting one property versus the two on this side. So that's, you know, in short, that that, that is what we looked at. And well, you know, there's the other the other part of having to bring in much more material in order to establish the bypass for road, which really shouldn't be underestimated. But those are the things that we looked at. Can I, can I address that very quickly? Um, one of the things, because I'm going to make this pertinent to this, this very hearing, when I compare the rail to this project, I see absolutely no concern for EV. I see absolutely no concern for 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 anything to do with historic buildings with Section 106. Uh, I have found everything being done and all the monies to expend on a rail project when these two bridges of historic value, in my opinion, this is the bridge on the River Kwai. And to say that this this rating of a 53 or a 39 uh, to be replaced. Who, question would be, who quantified or who made that determination? We, we're hearing that the lifespan of the bridge is eminent. If there were to be a delay, if this weren't approved today, if the resolution were deferred tomorrow, and the powers that be with their talents were able to come back in a year with after a couple public hearings and make some alter alterations and money was not a question, money was not a factor because we're spilling everything we got into this rail, is that if there were going to be funds available, let's pretend there is, what is the lifespan of those bridge 30 rated 31, 3 and 3A at 39 and the other one at 53? How much longer could they stay in place as is while we were redirecting as a community and with your, again, your expertise, how long do we have? In other words, if someone says you got six months to live, how long do we have? The question is, how much longer do we have to, so that we can get this thing done right? Because, yeah, the 36 and 39 and a 53 really has no, I, I, can't, I can't clarify that in my head what that means. Hey, may, I, may I frame it at least? Um, Council member, I'm hearing maybe three things at least. The first one is how much longer do we have? And, and I, I have to defer to the Department of Transportation as it is their facility. The second part of your question is that, or your comment is that we have no concern for EV. And then the third part that I heard is we have no concern about the architecture or the design of the bridges given that they are somewhat historic dating from 1937. I can certainly respond to those two sure. things, but maybe the first thing is how much uh, longer do we have? Yeah. Well, you know, the bridge uh, has actually gone beyond its life cycle. So if someone, a doctor, for example, gave you Thanks. six months to live, but this and you're on the eighth month, um, how much longer have you got to live? I don't think anybody can give you a real good answer on that. Uh, we are taking a chance right now by you know, by delaying this any further. Um, I can't tell you yes or no whether it will fall down tomorrow. We don't know. That is really a guess. My biggest question, why two at one time? 